All right, welcome to GXP episode two. We're back again a little bit later than usual, but scheduling conflicts. And as you see, we don't have CJ this time, but we have Kuma. I'm, I'm Ghost. I'm the boy, Krista. And I'm and... special, uninvited, yes, snuck in through the back door. What you talking about? You thought you won't go see me? Oh, <laughs> Y'all finna learn today. Yeah, y'all finna learn today. All right. Oh, this is we in trouble. Kuma, Ace of Space, Jack of all trades. It doesn't matter what you would have called me. Just know we're in here. We decided to be here. Let's get it. And with that being said, I'm going to jump straight into the first topic, which I decided to make a poll, being, you know, the melodic ghost that I am. And first thing I want to talk about was some music drops that happened this week because I was interested and I listened to a couple of them. I'm still starting to listen to one of them since they're, it's very recent. And that would be a four drops. 21 Savage, American Dream, Kali Uchis. I cannot pronounce the name of this album because I suck at Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and Kid Cudi and Sano. And just for shits and giggles, 6 9 dropped an album too, but it's trash. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only mention. Um, The 21 album, I'm going to first layer out by saying that it was solid from what, uh, from what I listened to. Um, Pretty consistent with what 21 makes. And like the instrumentation is pretty nice. It, honestly, his production has been getting better over the years as things stack up and his yeah, sure. vocal his vocalization actually has a bit more emotion to it this time around so it's interesting to see in here in essence and i'm wondering how it's going to go from here because i honestly was not expecting this drop i don't know if there was a rollout beforehand but it was just interesting to see how that was as the far thing as i saw was the, the that movie trailer i'm like oh there's an album coming <laughs> okay yeah, I did hear about that, but I didn't, I never saw the trailer itself. As far as moving over to Kali's album. Do you, do you the, know what it, do you know what the, the album actually, the name is, the, the translation? I will post it. It's going it. to piss you off when you see that translation. Are you serious? It's going to piss you off. Oh, You're going to be like, I feel like I should have done that. <laughs> okay 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 let me first off let me grab the let me let me post that in th the thread and then make a quick translation then because this seems like it's going to be interesting if that's the case i'm gonna okay, I feel okay this is how you pronounce it and let me just see if after me pronouncing it if you get an idea of what it translates to in english okay. orchids orchids Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> off of rip. Course, of course, it's a flower album. Okay, what <laughs> I'm about to say, what I'm about to say next makes a lot of sense. And also, I like that she dropped a flower album, and she's a. I hate wording it like this, but that's the truth. She's a Tyler project, which makes it mm -hmm. funnier, because she remember she got that big push after working with tyler but tyler's been like pushing her to the forefront since like the beginning so that's been a big thing so that's been a big thing but like the reason why i'm saying this is because this album from what i have heard even with my lack of understanding of the language sounds so lush everything about it the instrument the instrumentation the vocalization the mm -hmm. production everything sounds so like purposeful and like everywhere but all in the right ways it literally sounds like well honestly now that that makes a lot more sense it sounds like a bunch of flowers which on um, perfectly works with her aesthetic and like mm. i feel like kelly has been progressively like i don't she i don't even feel like we have met the prime album i genuinely believe if she goes down this track we are going to get sade levels of greatness out of out of this uh, out of this artist because the way she glides above uh, glides above and around every beat that she's on is just spectacular and like i said i love her work so far so that was just honestly pleasant and it was a pleasant release and i'm very much excited for more from her and okay, do you think your audience would hate me if i made a little 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 comparison go for it 
Yeah, um, right. I'm interested. This is just me, but from what I've heard from Cali and from what I've heard from this artist, I'm finna say, I feel like it is like the off. So it's like the opposite gender type of music. But in terms of like, they're doing something similar, but very different. I feel like Cali is the Miguel of like female. It, just in terms of like how she, you know, how the music sounds, it's different, but it still has a feel to it where it's like, oh yeah, I can vibe to it. You know, I can, I can, I hate to say it like this, but like, I could get down to it, like butt naked, <laughs> butterball, raw dogging. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what Miguel does. He makes music for everybody. It must it makes you, you feel like, oh, in yeah, it. This is for the boys talking about what we're going to do when we get someone that we, you know, special to us. Or maybe it's just a fling thing that we didn't expect it to, you know, escalate to something more. But then you listen to Callie and you're like, damn, she's. She kind of spitting. Sometimes you do just, you just be wanting to munch. You know what I'm talking about? You just be wanting to munch. <laughs> in, um, one of, in one of them zones. Yes, the more, it's one of those days, bro. You get caught. You saying that is interesting because the more I think about it, I could hear a very comfortable and chill, like, prime time sort of like Miguel side of the sound to it to some extent and like I said I feel like the lushness is just something that just works with her but I've heard that since like I've heard like Moonlight or See You Again like that's just how she rides vocals and I really appreciate that and it's especially interesting because if I go to um the track list give me a second I uh, eh one second and yeah okay okay yeah like track two was just so good it's so good it was just so Me good I, loca. it was it was just nice and i really appreciated like i said the vibes that the album gave and everything that came with it and it was just again a pleasant experience like personally it's probably gonna be top of this quarter for me in terms of like albums that have dropped so far and then we move to kid cuddy and oh, heard i'm things. as a cuddy fan i haven't listened to it yet but um if what you told me alone is true uh i have mixed feelings like i said it's it's middle of the road for Cuddy, and like I think it's like if anybody who's like listened to a decent amount of Cuddy knows that there was that period where it sounded like he was he lost his sound and he was finding it again, kind of. It sounds yeah. like we're going through that again, and I don't know, and I don't know how we got here, and that's what's bothering me about it. That would be like after Man on the Moon type beat. So with that being said, it was just like something that was like it. It also, I'm going to be honest, it felt like, I hate talking bad about Cuddy. It felt like it's a album that's made to grab streams. And I don't know how to feel mm. about that. It Made from that for them, their TikTokers. <laughs> like, it feels like. It feels like someone else's album filtered through Cuddy, which automatically brings the score down for me. That's where I'm at. And I don't know if I can, like, uh, maybe I need a couple more listens. Maybe I need to, like, vibe with it a bit more. But as far as it goes, I don't think it was, like, it just, it just wasn't it. And then I got to look at the track list again. Because, like I said, if out of the three... It bothered me the most because it felt like the other two artists are going f f up while Cuddy's like here. And I really don't know how to feel about that. Um, Kid Cuddy and Sano. Okay. That's. But I feel Actually, like Cuddy has built like that rapport with a lot of his fans that if they are diehard fans, they're going to like Cuddy anyway because he's got a lot of that, uh, which he said it himself. Not directly, but he's got a lot of that like psychedelic type music, 
and as someone who is very open about his past experiences and how he got into music uh he you know he was a bit uh before he got into music he was actually gonna be going to college for like film and like trying to be director and make his own movies but then he was like that it wasn't really working out because i didn't have you know i didn't apply myself to it as much as like i'm in college you know i want to party you want to have fun i want to do this and that and he said music wasn't even what he anywhere near where he wanted he said music was like his plan e so i'm it's like it's great that it worked out for him but i'm just like he's got such a diehard fan base to all the the druggies out there you know <laughs> they just love them some kid cutting. Just, i mean the track list i mean the track list speaks for itself and like y'all uh, you two know my taste so like you're gonna hear like some of these features and you're gonna be like I should like this album more, and that's what. But and I like I said, that's the part that bugs me. Cause okay, for example, track like I'm gonna just talk about a couple of the features. We have Travis Scott on this album. We have ASAP Rocky on this album. We have Yachty on this album. We have Pharrell and Travis on another track. We have X on this album. Wait, we have X Lil on Wayne. The album? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We have yeah. Lil Wayne, Young Thug. Like, I should like this album more. And I just feel like it exists. And that's the problem for me. Yeah. When you look at the track list, you definitely would probably assume without listening to anything, it's probably... Like, oh, this would go more hard. More of a mainstream album. So, with that being said, I like I said, I might need to sit on it longer. Like, it might be one of those situations where, like, okay, after some listens, it'll grow on me. But, like, if I had to, like, rate it, well, the, you know, I use the metals instead of like numbers, but like if I had to rate it, it's sitting at like a goldish high silver for me. And like, mm. I feel like it should be something that's like plat. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't know if you've listened to it, but would you would you say it's better or or worse than that? Uh, uh, what didn't he make that album for that movie he had on on Netflix yeah, or something? He did. Oh, oh, the movie, the movie soundtrack is way better. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. The movie soundtrack. Is I love that soundtrack. That most original, most like really heartfelt pieces in a minute. Like you can feel every single track on that uh, intergalactic. Yeah, you can mm. feel every single thing on this. It was. It was just. It was telling a story in itself before you even oh, watched yeah. like the movie. It, it was telling the stories within itself with the album. That's something I feel like he hasn't really done since like the first or second uh man on the moon and i'm yeah personally indicud favorite album of kid cuddy of all time right now that shit is nothing but a story <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing but a story from the beginning to the end he's just basically going through his life and i was just like man even the tracks where he doesn't say a word it's just straight music you feel that shit feel like you're levitating <laughs> exactly and when i heard intergalactic i was like i haven't felt like this about cud in a brick i still yeah. love the man he still has great bangers every now and again but in terms of like a full project where i just sat there and was like mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. And i do i do have like one more thing to check out because i thought about it um and I was wondering if there were any releases this week, but I don't think there was in terms of the K-pop sphere, if I remember correctly. Uh, Auto. Yeah, nothing no. from this week, at least on our radar. Radar. And honestly, um, the next thing I'm looking for is like the couple, like the next K-pop drops, and like Atarashi Gaka is what mm. I'm looking at next in terms of like more eastern stuff so like i'm trying to see how things are go with that but like in terms of those three albums and like i said the I, I i hate that i listened to it but you know what it is i gave it a stream the 6ix9ine album was trash we <laughs> didn't sang it again but like like uh, in terms of those three albums i would say they were all good it's just the kid cuddy one disappointed me so it brought it down a little more than it should have mm -hmm. but that's and I would say that the highlight was Cali. So like Cali, uh, Cali twenty one, then uh, Cuddy, in my personal opinion, when it comes to the music drops. And can we talk about the six nine a little bit because oh, I haven't no. listened to it. 
I've never listened to a 6 9 album only because uh, I just know, like, there's going to be songs up there that I'm like, cool, this beat is nice, but then I'm going to be listening to him and I'm going to be like, I don't believe you. Like, I, I just don't believe you. I can't believe anything somebody who looks like they stole their entire drip from Rainbow Dash had a motherfucking friends with magic, friendship with magic. Yeah, my Little Pony, bro. I can't take that serious. Like, I know he says a, a few times, you know, it's about having fun, but at the exact same time, don't get it twisted. I will be outside. I will be with the game. If I'm not shooting, I know people who will. And then I hear his interviews too, and I'm just like, even the people interviewing you don't believe you. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> And well, it's just like ah. Oh. I guess I'm hitting them with the. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I guess I. I guess That's what your gun sounds like. What gun sounds like that? <laughs> it's just like bro. I guess I can go slightly uh, deeper into that. So with the six nine project, because I decided to listen to it because it just surprised me that he dropped in the first place. Um, the best way I can put it is it is you know how the baby's been making the same music since 2018, and that's why yeah. his fans love him. <laughs> yeah, because he won't change. And to, okay, there you go. Um, that's why in the on the flip, <laughs> his music is like not great because it's, it's still the, the same, same as yeah, it's the same. It's the same. Like I would expect it by now. Maybe a oh, I'm not, I'm be honest with you. I would expect it a like Lil Uzi rock switch up or something by now. The one that but threw like, me off the most is when this man decided to do that one Spanish track with like the like the fucking soccer thing. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That man made a Fast and the Furious song. Okay, on a, that does bring me into something. This was not supposed to be a music episode. That does bring me into something. Uh, <laughs> I think Uzi has hit his full stride recently. This break core, mm. this break core Uzi is different, and I like it's, it. Like, I I like the we take Uzi's like unique sound and voice, and then we throw it over a break core beat. Yeah, I need that. I this agree. is like the type. This, this yeah. like when Yachty, this like when Yachty did his flip. I was like, okay, so we're just like experimenting now, but this is working out. I'm fine with this. <laughs> I'm definitely fine with this. And, and I'm gonna like, say shout out to Tyler the Creator because I feel like a lot of people, even though they don't say it, when they start experimenting like crazy outside, it's the gotta box, be because because of Tyler. It's gotta be like Tyler for like this era of music redefined himself completely and collabed, wrote songs, did so much stuff like behind the scenes. Went from angry rapper about. boy. <laughs> yeah, went to like distress team to straight up everybody power. Like <laughs> I will with that being said, because it's not the album you think I'm gonna say that is the reason, I will say that Cherry Bomb is the 808 and Heartbreaks of modern music. You know? Yeah. I'll, I'll accept that. I'll uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't disagree. I don't that like Cherry Bomb. That's flip. the funny part. <laughs> but, oh, I'm not a huge Cherry Bomb fan either, but when he came out with Flower Boy, I was like, mm. uh, you see, uh, I, you needed Cherry Bomb as a like an experiment. <laughs> That's what it was. You needed Cherry Bomb as a like prototype to see if it works, and then you picked every little thing that was working, and you just jammed it together, and it made Flower it, Boy. Especially when we were getting tracks that were leading up to that, like, a lot of the stuff on Wolf or like even like well that whole three part track like party in this party isn't over into mm -hmm. Beamer. I was like because <laughs> Campfire. You forgot Campfire. Campfire. I did, campfire. No, 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 no. I I trust me. I the three the three stack the three stack was nice. But like <laughs> that that particular like track it was the type of even back then was the type of sound I really wanted more from Tyler. And then like the fact that he grew that sound up to now and then it became a situation where he's like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna literally try to be I'm literally gonna try to be the Pharrell here. I'm gonna be like, Yeah, you can be you can be bigger than this or you can elevate this or you could like pick the sound out. Like I can totally agree with that because in my personal opinion, Tyler is also the reason ASAP Rocky had testing. I feel like testing doesn't happen without Tyler as well. And That's I like testing. Bad. I, I kind of agree with that for sure. So like, I remember like a lot of people 
did not like testing <laughs> when that dropped. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember when we were in chat, I was championing that album. <laughs> that was my bro. Yeah, I was right there with you, book shots. <laughs> <laughs> I was crit walking, bro. I ain't crit walked in a minute. I'm bug shots. Ah! It's 20 bug shots. And it be sucking on a lollipop by the bus stop. I was like, ah! Because I still think ASAP Forever is... I still think ASAP Forever is probably one of the hardest verses he has had. Like, period. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, my favorite song from Rocky still is a while back before that because Far Side would always... will kind of always be my favorite song by him. It's like Far Side every day and then you get to the newer stuff. <laughs> but um with that being said like i could totally see the, the the tyler thing is definitely a definitely a factor and it's gonna be one of those things that's like people don't notice it until the editorials come out about it until the people talk about it and stuff like that until you get that one random youtube video at 3 3 a.m that's like two hours long <laughs> talking about tyler like all right let me see what you have to spit about <laughs> but um the whole that, album listening youtube video and then they're just like you know what this surpassed anything I thought it was gonna be. So like definitely, and like I said, I think the drops have like raised their stock. And then oh, we gotta talk about it uh, again. Like I said, one not your music episode, but here we are. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Wait, the wait, wait. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing on music, and then I swear we can switch. <sighs> I I gotta bring it back to six nine. Can you tell me the name of his album? Give me oh. one second. <laughs> I, you I know what? I didn't even genuinely... think about what the name would be. Oh, 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 we finna cackle for a minute. Cause I got a question. Black Ball. Hold on. It's called Black Ball. He went to prison, right? <laughs> We're not going there. Not, We're just, not. just he he went to prison, right? Oh, okay. Cook. And the first thing this nigga drops when he gets out of jail. We're not lack. doing this. Ball. You're not. You're not doing this. We but like, go. did 21 niggas in prison was like, we remember what you said. <laughs> we remember what you said, Mr. We know, Nine. We know obviously what this is a reference to, but like, even then, that, that name is something that's a... That's the thing. And he's that's... holding a gigantic black ball above his head <laughs> in the th in the in the cover art. All I'm saying is coincidence. I think not. All right. Do we even need to bring up the little Nas stuff that happened? No. 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 That's I. I. I want to glide across this as quickly as possible because. Oh God! Oh what? Mm. So. I think he's a marketing genius, but I also need him to relax because I want to be able to listen to him in public. That's Bro, all. I that say. man, that man trolled a little too <laughs> hard this time. That's <laughs> all I gotta never say. He's slowing down until they actually cancel this man completely. Oh, they were pretty close this time. <laughs> until he literally, by his label, by the corporations, by the internet, by any music platform. Which they're not going to do because he makes them too much money. He's getting way too many streams. They're not going to just say, yeah, we just got to we just gotta cut it. You know what I mean? In because... a way, when you think about it, he's doing what Eminem did back in Eminem's, like, prime time. In That's terms of crazy. he said whatever he wanted. No, just think about it. He's saying whatever I mean... he's wanting. He's doing whatever he's wanting. And no matter what, it's not failing. He'll call himself out. He'll call other people out. He'll do the craziest thing in his videos. Butter ball naked. <laughs> <laughs> they can't cancel him. He's untouchable right now. And it's crazy. The only person I know who did anything even remotely similar is Eminem. It's, it's okay. it. He's reached a level where he's unfuckwittable. So it's crazy to think about too because I also think that there is a certain level of quality that comes out with his song that makes it like can you please just let me let? Can you please <laughs> picture yourself in a situation where I can actually listen to you in public without somebody going? <laughs> like I can't lie, it's catchy. I I've been saying yeah, I'm boss, back bro. like Jay Christ all week. I can't lie. It's back to back, bro. It'd be making me want to get on the wall. Just just turbulence, just turbulence. <laughs> 
and then turn around and thug shake it. I be listening to little Nas just be wanting to get crunk, bro. And I'm just like, man, I cannot go to work and tell anybody that I I be I, I bummed them. little Nas on the way here because if I do, they're gonna be like. All right. <laughs> but, um, and one more thing. I don't know if I talked about this last podcast, but I don't remember if I talked about this last podcast. But one I think I will say is that, yeah, it's over with. The Doja album grew on me. It's done. I don't know it what happened. happened. What happened? It, it I got happened. A, I grew, gotta have it, context. It grew, it grew on me. Okay, so it came out, and I felt weird about it because I was like, yeah, this is a very abrasive album, but it's her being abrasive on purpose. It's Doja, I expect that. There's tracks that I didn't like like that, and there was tracks that I like. I felt weird, and then suddenly. <laughs> I was like, minding my business, playing the game. <laughs> then I just bust out with the, we are enemies. We are we foes. Are foes. <laughs> I was like, that is, it's good. I was like, and then uh, stuff like Agora Hills, 97. It, it's a good album. Not, bro, it's when Agora planet. Hills comes on, bro, I'd be, I'd be shaking my ass in my chair. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say this. It's still not planted her for me personally, but it's close. It's de- it's past hot pink now, actually. She was rapping, rapping on this album. <laughs> I will say, for me, it's planted her. Her pa- planted her. Scarlet is tied with um, Amala, and then you have hot pink. That's where I'm at. And like I said, I didn't expect the album to grow on me that much, especially considering the fact that like I was like, it's abrasive, it's a little weird, it's the promotion was like a little strange, but at the same time, it, it comes down to a couple factors. Doja's vocals are always gonna be solid, regardless of how that goes. And also the beat selection on Scarlet is crazy. Yeah. Like actually, the more I think about it, I'm like, that beat selection is insane. So Definitely. So I have to take the I have to take the Doja fan L one out one again. That's just how it's gonna be. The one one in the books. The one album I thought was gonna be. You know what? It's okay. Yeah, it's it's a wrap. Um, what we looking like on time, Chris? We're about thirty minutes in. All right, cool. So we this you know it easy easy trans easy transition. So next thing I wanted to talk about. And this is going to have some varied opinions. The state of gaming. And I wanted, and the reason why I wanted to get into this is because I feel as if this is actually a good episode. This is actually a good episode to have you because I feel as if we're going to have varied opinions on this because not just because I tend to be a little nicer about this topic, but I have a different view about it because I think what is about to happen is the storm before the peace. If that makes sense, Pete. I think it's gonna. Pete. I think it's gonna get. Yeah. You I have my reasons. I, th- I have my reasons. I have my reasons. I have my reasons. Can't wait. I have hear. my reasons. I can't wait to hear my cookie crumble. So let me open it up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> let me open it up like this. All right. So I think what is going to happen is that two things. Free to play is gonna kind of implode on itself. I also believe that competitive gaming is going to dwindle with minor exceptions. Well, I guess major exceptions, but exceptions nevertheless. And that's going to cause us to go into a different renaissance with gaming that is going to be healthier in the long run. But I do think we're going to have to take a couple L's in this first in these first two quarters to get there. And mainly and mainly the reason why I'm saying that is because if you notice and look around, every genre is hitting like a certain stride, but it, there's also a weird aspect about said stride um, that is happening. For example, excuse me. Okay. For example, one of the things being like for like my biggest game, of, one of my biggest games of last year, Street Fighter, right? Really so- really solid project, got a lot of casuals, did what it needs to do, lots of content, what I genuinely think is an overall good package. Has some weird aspects that's turning that's turning uh turning the competitive scene off a bit about it. Like 
you have half the competitive scene that really likes it and then you have the other competitive scene that kind of doesn't but at the same time what i think is about to happen with this is the same thing i think is about to happen to a lot of stuff what's happening is that the old heads of these particular genres are going to move more towards single player and enjoy what i think is going to be the more single player renaissance while i think these new guys are going to be more of our multiplayer gamers in that sense and this is the just a try to like the appeal factor of what is being marketed towards what is different and it's even stranger for me because i'm in the middle of it in the sense of like i feel like an old head with young mentality on gaming and that's what i mean in the sense of like i like this new stuff but i could definitely see the stuff that turns off the older gamers about it and even then like i said these companies got to figure out their currency and their like shops because if we're because i think this shop stuff is going to be here to stay to be honest and i think it's going to invade more <laughs> games but it's definitely going to be something that needs to be figured out but we're going to have to also get used to it because i'm on the mindset when stuff like this happens we got to get used to it until they move to the next thing and then hope the next hope the next thing is better because nine times ten the next thing is probably going to be worse than this remember we are in the age where people miss loot boxes i'm just saying <laughs> I mean, my whole mindset about that is if it's not a gotcha, the mobile game purchases should not be there. Let me buy my skins. Ooh, thank you. Because I, okay. I am a consumer of gotcha games, but when I boot up Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, I'm not trying to see that shit, bro. <laughs> I, no, I, uh, I agree. And this is where people do get my opinion on it a little bit twisted. I'm not saying that I like it but i know these but i know these companies i know how the function of business works i'm just saying it's going to be here to stay for a while and just out crying about it is not necessarily going to do anything because in my personal opinion we don't have enough people who are of the mindset of i'm actually going to not do this thing because it does something i don't like so it's going to keep going until it doesn't that's where i'm like if it's going to be here i might as well just be like whatever i like the i like literally 95 of the 95 percent of the game i'm not gonna act like this is going to be my end-all be-all factor with it that and like i said and this has been something that's been talked behind uh the podcast but i like for example i like six a lot because it reminds me of three because it kind of plays like three in my personal opinion just with more mechanics so that's just a big example of like yeah this kind of like we get a really good game and then it always has that weird that weird ugly decision and I'm noticing that the only case of this I don't see it's in the fighting game spirit at least is Tekken. And I also think X Defiant when it comes out is gonna be okay. I hope even though it's even though it's Ubisoft and that makes me go Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I really hope that they just stick to their guns because from what everybody said from the beta, phenomenal. It's it played an unadulterated it played... arcade shooter. Yeah. It pl- Personally, it played like Cold War, but faster. Oh, yeah. If they, if they mm. keep it like that, mm. and then all they do is make sure that the battle pass is how a battle pass should be. If it, it's a free, it should be a free game, right? x Fine is supposed to be completely free? free to it's, play? Free to pl- it's free to play. Okay, so free to play game. Obviously, battle pass is how battle passes should be for any game, but especially free to play. Free content, either all the way through the battle pass or up to a certain point to where it's like you have more than enough that you're content with it and then a premium side 10 bucks you know you get something every single level whether it's currency whether it's special shop tokens whether it's weapon skins whether it's custom cosmetics on your character player cards whatever the case may be right as long as they keep it like that the game will be completely fine and then obviously because it's a free-to-play game it's going to have that Overwatch, League, Valorant effect. There's a special little shop that you can visit every single day if there's something in there that you want or something that's there for a week period of time so you get your money together. Buy it. Completely on you. That's completely fine. But while we're on the topic of battle passes... There's the right way to do it. And there's the oh-so-very-wrong way to do it. What are these mother... Let me not. What are these devs at Psy Games doing to Grand Blue? Dude, okay. Bro, so when I saw that the first Grand, time. 
Grand Blue genuinely Grand Blue is genuinely hurting me because Grand Blue dropped originally. Everyone remembers this. Grand Blue dropped originally with a battle pass. It's never been a IP that didn't have a battle pass. Yeah. But one of those things where it did genuinely feel optional. And while I say the shop in Grand Blue is okay somewhat. Cause like it, you get a little decent amount of customizations and stuff just for the little gold and stuff like that. I've never been the free to play model is actually backfiring in this case. I have never been so unmotivated to buy a game in my life. <laughs> like it's like I got and, what a, I got a rotating cast. I got the 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 perma stays. Is not well. Grand is the only perma stay, but the thing about it though is that like I'm a big person. Like I don't. I jump around rosters in games. A lot of people, y'all know this, this is like, I jump around rosters somewhat in games. I at least have like four to five characters. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it though, is that like with Grand Blue was the one game where I had the one guy and I'm not even motivated enough to buy the game to get the one guy. Cause like I was a Belial player just straight up. Like, and I don't think Belial's in being a rotation yet. He might have by the time I haven't been playing, but like the fact I haven't been playing and I think Grand Blue, I think Grand Blue feels great. When it feels great, but I also think they changed stuff that didn't need to be changed. It wasn't a game that needed to be changed. No. Like, it, and that's crazy coming from me because I'm like, oh, change? I'm fine with this. I, I like change. Death card, favorite tarot card. Love that. But, like, this is not one of those situations where the game needed to change a lot. I can understand the repackaging. I genuinely can understand the repackaging from a marketing standpoint. If you make it look shiny and new, you'll grab those players that we were supposed to grab in the first place. And Grand Blue should have been way bigger than what it was. But, but it with came the weight, during COVID. But <laughs> yeah. with original. With, yeah. with a, a lot worse off net play than it does now. <laughs> during, the period of, during the period of time where we were suffering when it came to fighting games like absolutely yeah. suffering yeah. and like even with the games that like i disagree with a lot of people on like strive and stuff like that i could still say generally fighting games were suffering at that point in time we're getting to a, a we're actually hitting a high note now i personally believe because i've never seen this many people interested in fighting games in my life but <laughs> at the same time it's weird because like it's like you took the ki model and made it worse and i don't know how you do that yeah, mm -hmm. KI found like the amazing balance with the free to play until you buy it thing. And that's and because it motivated you like, oh, this character's sick. I want to, you yeah. know, what? I'm gonna get the, I'm I want to level it up. I want to give take it to Shadow Labs. I want to take story. I want to buff the hell out of it. I want to get all my equipment, yeah. items. And guess what? Grand Blue has that. Grand Blue has a character specific leveling system. Here's the problem. There's too much <laughs> in there. And I mean, like, when I say too much, I mean colors, cool. Love that. Weapon skins, cool. Love that. Otherwise, I would have to grind rupees, and you can't just grind rupees in this version of the game. I'll get back to that. Reskins for, like, default weapons. So, like, everybody's got three default weapons in this game uh -huh. or just weapon skins that you can change through every single weapon has a reskin in a different color i'm a normaya yule fan of boy <laughs> when the vanilla came out there was only two characters i wanted in the game thank god i got them first it was normaya first and then yule came out like season two first character and i was just like <laughs> I was stuck shaking. I couldn't do anything else. I was like, both my characters are here. Everything else is bonus. They have a perfect model in vanilla. They had an RPG mode that played like the gotcha game, but was completely original in the fact that no fighting game has ever done RPG mechanics and a fighting game for a story mode. Now, you could say Persona, but that's not exactly the same for the simple fact that it's, you know, character I would, specific. You know I would I mean? argue, I would argue uh scenario campaign Tekken 6. Okay. In a way, but still not quite like I mean, Grand another Blue, close Grand Blue one took... that's not Gla Grand Blue and it's very bare bones is uh Invasions in the new MK, but that's very bare bones RPG elements. I don't want to. I see what you mean. Mm. 
We got but, that's pen and pen and MK two. I got words. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> but for Grand Blue, it was they took their model of the gotcha game and they slapped it onto a fighting game, and then they even brought in a mechanic that we've never seen like ever, was which is gear equipment. So for the gotcha aspect of their game, they brought it to the fighting game. But everything you can get from the gotcha, you can equip it to your characters in like a backlog, basically. So it's like yeah. you don't see the things equipped unless it was like a specific skin on a weapon that they made for the character skins. They don't give an added effect or anything, but they look cool as hell. And you still have like your loadouts and your character presets. So they had special moves and then like special abilities. So like I could use my super and then use this full arsenal and get that all back and then do this RPG mechanic and then just, you know, pub stomp a boss, basically. But they still had the water, wind, fire, earth. They had their elements that they have in the gotcha, put it in RPG mode, and then let you have at it. It was a it was a great grind. It was worth it because you got uh, points to unlock other stuff like the harder weapon skins that you can only get from RPG mode or get extremely lucky with the gotcha, that's what I liked about it. You could grind naturally, or you could play your luck. And whichever one you wanted to do, regardless, eventually you'll be getting what you want. And then they make Relink, and Relink doesn't even have RPG mode. There's no RPG mode at all in Relink. And I'm sitting here like, you took your best selling feature, <laughs> other than just the gameplay, right? It's just gone. Y'all had all one this thing time you put to the hardest with to build on it to just keep soldering it in with the hammer, and then you know what they give us? Grand Bruiser. If I'm saying that right, Grand Bruise, Grand Bruiser, it's something like that. It's Grand basically Bruce, uh, Grand Bruise Fall Guys. Yeah, it's basically the Fall Guys. Oh my Grand god, Blue I forget characters. there's a Fall Guys mode in that game. Is it bad? No. Is it fun? Kinda. If you like Fall Guys, only thing is it doesn't run as smooth as Fall Guys because Okay, that's, that just, that's not just me. Runs that's dark. not just that's not just me. Okay, so like I normally don't notice the FPS thing, to be honest. Like no, that, that, shit that bad. Dirty. But like it felt stiff and like, not like running in mud. Hell. Oh my god. Mud would be the nice thing of putting it. It's <laughs> sludge. I played my first game today for the Battle Pass Challenge. Still got to talk about that. And, uh, no, it's not it. It's not. I tried to like it. I'm running around. I've got people's avatars who are different characters throughout the series, characters you can't play as, characters that are just skins. I had Bahamut running beside me. I was like, that's cute as hell. That's cute as I don't know what. But it's dog doo doo. Because it's 30 frames a second and we're running through sludge. And you expect me to traverse an obstacle course? You expect me to make pinpoint decisions? Yeah, and then the crazy part about it is that, like, when playing it, it made me go, I kind of want to play Fall Guys. And that's the problem. <laughs> Or like, cause like, if we're gonna do this, I will say this: if we're gonna do this with Grand Blue, I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind them adding this mode, especially like that. I love cute shit. If we're gonna do this, become, I hate to say it, but become Tekken then. Make mini games your thing. Literally, like, okay, you got Fall Guys, but if you don't want to do Fall Guys, you got RPG mode. Why are we losing things? It's like, and I get it. Or something time. that's technically, well, I mean, objectively worse. I would say at this point. Oh my and, god! And I and I and I and to be fair, I I will give I will give it this. As someone who has been working on a game for quite some time, I do a lot of stuff. Po like podcast people, I do a lot of stuff. We ain't even gonna get into that. So, as someone who like has been working on a game for quite a bit, I get it. It's difficult, especially when you want to port something over to this new system and stuff like that. It's kind of weird. But at the same time, my, my, all they had to do. Take old RPG mode, move it over, and then add a couple things. You didn't even really have to go that crazy with like adding new stuff for it. And if more you want bosses, to, more stages, more upgradable things. That's Secret it. Secret bosses too, even maybe. And it, 
and if you wanted and if you wanted to go that far because i am also a person who understands monetization is king when it comes to situations like this make it to where you get add episodes later and do that if you really want to bring that monetization and just be like okay we have we have rpg mode episode two it's like it's not really that like take t- call the class call the one from vanilla episode one episode, yeah have up ep- have episode two come out be like okay this is what your character's been doing this is what this character's been doing this is where like this is how they feel right now this is the character they because it can even be stuff that explains like the characters in this version of the game have different quotes refer that reflect character changes how did these character changes happen? We can talk about it. And that. there's no story it, there to explain it. Nothing. You have to literally like I'm the type of person that will just watch intros, but you have to basically like watch intros and piece stuff together in like comments that they make towards each other. Like it's like very old school in that fact. But I don't think Grand Blue is one of those things that was like big old school to begin with. So like you don't have to go that route if you weren't going that route at first. Like you understood who these characters were from all the stuff you got out of Vanilla. You very much understood who these characters were. And you do to yeah. some extent here, but it's like toast compared to what it used to be. And like I said, it's one of those situations that didn't need to change that much. It straight up didn't. And I I support change, but like, again, I support change, but sometimes that doesn't necessarily need to be your thing unless that is your thing. Street Fighter becoming a different game every Street Fighter has been something that's been happening since too. So that's different. <laughs> that's just every Street game, Fighter's thing at this point. <laughs> every series doesn't need to do this, and that's what I'm talking about. This is what I mean when I say that a lot of the fighting game players are going to move from fighting games, unless you're like somebody with like the mentality of me, is because I love new stuff. I very much love new stuff, but like there we are running out of legacy series. The only legacy series I can think of is KOF and Tekken, and that is it. And that's that a problem. True. KOF being the hardest legacy yeah. <laughs> known to man. Tekken has its legacy features, but I mean, as a Tekken main since three years old on Tekken 3, the game's been through changes. It, it's been through tons of changes, so many so that uh, old heads, professionals, <laughs> uh, streamers, uh, a lot of people who've just been supporting it back when they were in the arcades themselves, are just like yeah this is stop it this is not becoming Tekken anymore you know with the whole 2d characters it was a 2d takeover when akuma came in t7 and then geese just piling it on and then you and have then, characters now like old like old man ninja <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like and t8 doing exactly what i told people was going to happen regardless i said eventually they're going to make another street fighter across Tekken. But it's going to be straight Tekken. T8 is probably as close as we're ever going to get. But I told people from the jump when I saw how Akuma is moving across the screen. He's very much playing Tekken. He just has his 2D element, but it's too strong because nobody else has a 2D element. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So then... My You're like, oh, thought was, that's going to be Tekken 8. <laughs> probably going to have something where everybody has some sort of element that makes us still play Tekken. It's what you need to get. We still play Tekken. It's just now we're extra right here. spice. That extra step that everybody's just like, all right, you got blue shit. I got blue shit. And it's not just rage. <laughs> it's anytime I want to use it, anytime I hit confirm, whatever the case may be. And, uh... Would you say this is the jump? No, because these these are very different jumps. Would you say it's the jump from T3 to Tag 1? Or would you say this is the jump from Tag 1? No, no, not I'm saying it wrong. Is this the jump from, like, Tag 1 to 4? Or is this the jump from 4 to 5? 4 to 5, 5 to 6. With Like, which one you say is more comparable? Because there I mean, was like a in couple terms jumps of in adding that. new systems, like just adding completely new systems that wasn't something as easy as just, oh, I did a launcher, I can tag my my teammate, they can do a little string real quick and then tag again or whatever the case may be. If you're talking about a 
established combo system, you could say, instead of just uh, every now and again getting a good hit in, like a counter hit or a confirmable move that launches. The biggest jump in Tekken ever. Because, like I said, everyone is 2D. That is not something <laughs> Tekken is ever, ever expected to be having. Which, I mean, from my standpoint, I was like, it works. We had Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Only problem was early, the the auto jewels were dumb. They, they, if <laughs> that wasn't a thing, that game would have lived a lot longer. But then when they finally fixed the jewel system, it was already, you know, fighting games is a niche. It's got its diehard fan base because people are still playing Cross Tekken today, running tournaments. Shout out to Psych Blue, Fresh Cut Brothering. Love you, brother. Um... They're still running tournaments on that game today, and you know, they've got diehard fans, people who care about it. But I think then, it was... for me, oh, I'm sorry, for me, it was just like I can already see them eventually making a 2D Tekken, even though it might not be like straight up 2D, mm -hmm. only for the simple fact that too much was happening at one time, right? <laughs> DOA, another really great franchise for me personally playing it since i was young love the characters love the combat love the feel and the vibe of the game always have and then when they made six and they were just trying to kill it before it even really started i was already like what is going on and then t7 happens and 2d characters are running the game and now it's just like what is going on but DOA 6 still gets one really big update, one really big patch, and two DLC characters. They bring my back, and this is the first game Cool has been in in oh, a 3D fighter, that. other than, like, <laughs> Maximum Impact. It's like, what are 3D games cooking? And then I was just like, but DOA did it right. They knew how to implement yeah. a 2D character, but not make them play a 2D game. So mine still has inputs that are like quarter circles and that are forward and backward. Same with Kula. They got quarter circles forward and backward, but they don't have a different meter. They don't have a max mode like G's has in T7 that just changes the game completely. Just the options of what he can do and what, what goes on. DOA 6 already had a metered mode or a meter under every character. That gave you a super at any time you wanted it. That gave you a all like an omni parry for half the meter. It did everything right. It was already implemented so that a two D character could be there and stride. Yeah. T eight gets announced. They show some of the people who were working on the game, and it was like I was just I was astonished at how on point I was. Half the devs that worked on DOA help make t8 and i'm sitting here going did i call it or was this the plan did you <laughs> did you just want to push tech into the absolute pinnacle of a we could do it you know what i'm saying like they're trying to it feels yeah. like to me personally they're trying to take tech into the highest of height as a legacy game by making it like and a turn be like an omni fighter like anybody can get into this game because not only are there legacy characters new characters 2d characters which we haven't seen anything yet i'm not gonna say nothing i don't know if there's gonna be any 2d characters in this game but at the exact same time i don't see it not happening just because of how much success seven had i wouldn't be surprised if eliza makes a return personally oh for sure god oh, for sure please That's <laughs> I want that to happen so that she's in a game that actually makes sense for her because she first started in Revolution without meter and she was oh, fuck busted. with the blue shit. And her with... Uh, with heat? Uh, like, I'm be honest. Gonna be stupid. If, if, Eliza, if Eliza does show up in T8, I feel like she's going to be playing Street Fighter 6 straight up. <laughs> I mean, add a Street Fighter 6 character. Throw fucking... Ryu, Ken, Luke, nah, because Luke nah, is the new nah, fake. Nah. Put I would Luke like, in this game. I would like, personally, 
I would like Luke or Marissa. Those are the two oh, that make the most sense for me. Marissa free. I would be fucking. Oh my god, that'd Marissa be free. nasty. I would she be comes disgusting. In, she, with she comes in with the white suit costume as the uh, as the alt attire. It's over with for me. I'm sorry. Nah, <laughs> it's done. Mm. It's it's GG's if that happens. But yeah, um, they're just trying to push Tech into the pinnacle, saying that this is like an Omni fighter. Even though it's a 3D fighter, it will always probably be a 3D fighter. They've pretty much said that our characters can play in any environment and any hazardous. And then throwing the DOA dev team, like half of them on there, and then seeing the DOA stuff that we've never seen. Like, sure, we've had wall, we've had wall splats, we've had wall breaks, we've had yeah. ground spikes. We've had things, elements from everywhere. But in terms of actual, like, an explosion on a wall, an explosion on the Hella ground, DOA. I can't explain Don't. anything else. Nothing else was doing that yeah. in a 3D fighter other than DOA. And the then when game... I saw that the team was there, I was like, this is the <laughs> perfect game. My game might be dead, but my other game has the people that i love just scoot it's it like over. the phoenix and ashes I, snuck through <laughs> i got the best of both worlds right now i'm living my fantasy <laughs> when it comes to a fighting game but at the exact same time i just hope when it drops in a few weeks bro is this a few weeks away i just hope when it drops everything that we may have had a concern about and really that being like character balance because we already know it's Tekken obviously there's going to be some shit <laughs> we've been we've been saying this to each month. other since we played it at Evo <laughs> yeah bro it's probably going to be a month before everybody actually figures out every little character obviously they're going to have pre tourneys and all types of other stuff yeah. so people can see where characters are right now for how people are playing and the things they get to do with their heat or uh, with a certain uh, stage aspects but all i'm saying is the heat was there designed to make it easier for everybody to fight everybody just like t7 did with rage arts and rage drives armored moves t7 was the first game to have just straight up armored moves so with now that, that sprinting follow-ups now is yeah all that stuff and with that being said i'm glad Games are becoming more accessible, especially hard ones like Tekken. If you've ever yeah. just looked at any YouTube video of them doing like a character breakdown, it is a very in-depth command list. When you look at it, it will tell you things that are cancelable, which it's never done. Usually you would just have to figure it out from playing so much. Or it's just like a standard cancelable thing, but like Nina has a lot of cancelable moves where she would just faint and then do a sidestep or a back uh the her uh special back dash where she just dodges and she gets buttons out of those. They tell you everything now. They tell you what spins, what bounds, what uh heat dashes, what heat engagers, all of that stuff, very in depth. But it's just don't make it too easy. It still needs to feel like Tekken, which somebody who's played the demo in one of the betas, it feels like Tekken. Played at Evo, it, it's Tekken. It's Tekken. It's, it's definitely That's still Tekken. <laughs> it's just, uh, we don't know how all of the characters play yet. So I still want it to feel, because that's the thing. Geese and Akuma, <laughs> they were playing Tekken, but just so much easier that it didn't feel like they were actually Tekken on the bugger sugar, bro. <laughs> Yeah, it's like they didn't feel like they were quite here with this. They still had high execution things, especially Akuma with the FADC cancels. Those were actually pretty hard. Don't get it twisted. But, but, once they got them, the <laughs> damage, the non-scaling, the, the mix, the Oki, my god. Okay. And it's going to be interesting to see as somebody who's like been a because I've been a casual Tekken player for years. Love the series, but I'm definitely a casual. And this is the first time I'm taking the series somewhat seriously since Tag 1. 
which is going to be a very i feel like it's going to be quite the awakening experience to see because everyone everybody knows this too i'm big on accessibility in terms of games and stuff like that not necessarily scaling down the hard stuff per se but i like stuff like something simple being strong sometimes because like sometimes it doesn't need to get that complicated or something <laughs> being easier on the hands and stuff like that i'm Street big on Fighter. that Ryu. you don't yeah. gotta do nothing crazy you just kill yeah. <laughs> yeah so like with that being said it's like i'm interested to see how that goes especially since like i said i'm gonna be putting time into this one and i know i'm gonna be putting time into this one so i really want to see like how this actually plays out um and that actually takes me to a another thing i was thinking about when it came to um tekken there is two particular guesses i have about what's gonna with the series itself i think it's competitive scene if so gets the money it's going to be as big as street fighter straight up for one and two this is going to be a game where i feel like it's going to have the most surprising top tiers genuinely besides the mm. mishima's People are going to, like, make assumptions that first month, but when people start figuring out that he shit, man, oh, things are going to change. I feel yeah. as if, especially considering the fact that, like, back in the beta, this is the first time we've seen Huarong considered really strong <laughs> since, like, what, T3, if I remember correctly, T4? Yeah. So, so like, if the poke style, if that extreme poke style is coming back as well, especially with the fact that the Kore uh, like you know the Korean players are going to be very much eating that up because that's their stuff, like because you know you got Middle East which loves their rushdown, they love their aggression, and then you have like Korea that loves the poke style, and I think like I would like to straight up say that America's like, correct me if I'm wrong, you know the Tekken scene better than I do, but very brawly in terms of how they fight. Yeah, we're. American players are always looking for a launch in the big damage. They will, they will just get punished just so they could get a launcher. And I'm just like, Ugh. I'm going to do it again. You better look out. out. Down four to six times in a row. If you walk into it, hey, I get big damage. You have to catch up now. <laughs> so, like, with that being said, that's very interesting. But also the view on that game does bring me into something that I've been complaining about for the past two weeks. And that is a game on the other side of the spectrum, totally other side of the spectrum, a FPS game called Overwatch, which has been stressing me out for like the entirety of like you, multiple. You don't gotta tell us. <laughs> and the reason why I bring this up is because I also think with a game like that is it's showing that for once it's a weird thing where I don't, I used to, I used to be of the mindset that a lot of games need to be balanced top down, straight up. I was of the mindset that you you balance towards the people that are extremely good and then bring that down from there. But one of these things I'm noticing now is that like, with games like that or certain games, that is not something you necessarily can do. And past that, I think that a lot of competitive games, a lot of games now are losing their original like factor that brought players in which is why i said it's weird for me to say this but like i don't think the change thing is like big everywhere and that's the sense of like the change from 6v6 to 5v5 caused problems let me put it like this if every character in the game needs to be reworked to fit the game i think that a mistake was made in changing the game in 8 it's just and we're noticing team size man <laughs> we're noticing character we're noticing characters getting because we're not even talking about the store geez but we're noticing characters that like nobody would have complained about previously having moments of like people actually complaining like people are talking about anna being a problem anna's real OP they, now then she hurt yeah it was like that's that's that would be considered unheard of nobody wanted anna to be touched in one like up or down in or like situations where like the standards are like the fact that I'm hearing stuff about Cassidy getting another rework or Reaper of all characters getting a rework. The fact that Reaper is getting or rumored to be getting one is insane. I've even heard stuff which I don't fully Roadhog of all characters getting a rework. I've heard stuff with like people discussing Diva even and I think that will actually kill some of the player base if she gets touched. But what that's a whole other thing. do to her? That depends. If it's changing how defense matrix work, I might be about it. I'm not even going. I, it. as a person that loves Diva, I hate that, and this is why we wouldn't need this if we had the other tank. 
I mean, yes, but that's the thing about changing the game. They would have have to change the game because nobody would actually want to come back to Overwatch 2 from 1 because I I played Overwatch 1 for like 3, 4 months straight. And uh, I ran into the same exact teams probably 95% of the time. And it was the pants group. It would be Sleepy Pants, Ghost Pants, all the, just the pants group. And I ran Once into that meta was found, it, it was locked in. <laughs> a lot, just duoed or trio with some of my some of my homies. And uh, the thing is, when they re-released it, they were like, "We're gonna have to make change for people to actually be interested or disinterested enough to see if it's as bad as they think it is." So. It's a marketing thing on one hand. On another hand, it's literally our biggest complaint in Overwatch 1 was as a DPS, as two tank, all I'm doing is shooting shield. That is Which, a very valid complaint because Arissa, Ryan, Sigma, those were the top three D.Va. Those were the top Four that you just ran into all the time just shield 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 you were like well i can't push the point because if i do get in i'll be instant i'll be insta charged and smelt it out at the exact same time if i switch to sombra i get to take out a shield but i don't always want to be forced to play a character yeah. just because i want to get rid of one aspect so that my team can push in or get a pick or set up for something and that's why in a way i agree games should not be or games at certain points should be made top down but the problem with pros they are pros they're always going to reinvent something they're always going to start a new meta they're always going to find a way to beat whatever it is in front of them or they'll just go next and that's the thing when you nerf it from the best player down to the lowest player you get what happened in Tekken 7 Kazumi was just fine she was Amishima even though she's not Amishima like by definition she does what Amishima does she yeah Koki she windows you down she punishes you for going for unsafe things and then she calls the game. Once you get a knockdown, she goes for Oki. And now you just, you know, you got to wait your turn. That's how Tekken was originally made. And this is why a lot of people, old heads and new, were kind of like, I don't really know the direction y'all are trying to go in, right? And the same thing for Overwatch. It was, we don't really know the direction you're trying to go in. Because yes, me as a DPS main, I hated it. I hated Overwatch 1 when... All the shields started coming because that's all I was doing. If I was Widowmaker, I was shooting shields. I'm not supposed to be. I'm supposed to be trying to find a pick. But shields are just so versatile. And then especially because you had characters that can place them wherever they wanted to on the map. So Sigma can just be like, all right, I'm a push up. I got another shield here. Just block her off. Now she can't play the game. But I, I would... get that. That's annoying. But, but I would make the argument. But... Go for but... it. Go for it. One tank being buff wasn't a problem. One tank being too buff is the current problem Overwatch has. They've got way too much speed. They walk too fast, they hit too hard, and they take too much to kill. Unless the whole team is on them, or Anna's the problem. She's not. She's been doing the same job that she's always been doing. It's just now she can actually do her job. So by definition, she's buff, or she feels better. She's not doing anything crazy that she wasn't doing in Overwatch 1. It's just now that she doesn't have to just sit there and only heal the team, or now that she can actually push in and get the grenade on an enemy tank, she feels great. She feels OP, and it's just like, it's not the case. It's just she couldn't do it before because she would always be blocked out. Tanks are still tanks. 
They be taking damage. I will still. There's a particular argument I'm making as like someone who switched from support main to tank main. Yeah. And one of the things is that the current way that the game is caused a entire different problem because this is something I've personally been complaining about and other tank fans have been complaining about. One of those things being is that even when your character is extremely giga buff, tank feels like the most miserable role in the game. And the reason being is because of two things counter pick or the way they have to buff stuff because the only way to make the game fresh to rotate the way out to rotate the way out and a lot of the balancing that's been happening around it is okay it's this season this tank is giga buff this season go for it oh this tank's giga buff this season all right so now we're gonna have this one it's gonna be either this tank or the counter pick for that tank and that is what you're playing individuality in tank is kind of suffering yeah. and by that and even past that it is making, and even past it, is making certain issues that I personally don't believe were issues as much bigger issues. For example, D Matrix, because there's so much utility in the game, something like D Matrix is terrifying outright, even way more so than it was previously. Because even when you, and I'm the type of person that will also look at the stacks of how things flow down, Diva gets a lot of utility in like low to middle ranks, and she always has, she's just been a consistent pick. Like, hell, she's my character with the highest win rate and kill rate of any of my characters still. Um, and that's one of those things where it's like, okay, cool. It is what it is. I would even take a slight Matrix nerf, even, like, you know, the cooldown, stuff like that. But I am scared of them doing it like they did Valkyrie and Apex, but I'm not going to get into Apex. Actually, no, I am. Just, that's going to be a very small tangent. But um, when it comes to how the game functions and stuff like that the problem is when we have to complain about tanks like sig because what i mean is like there are certain characters across the board in every single role where you can say if you play that role that's your main role this is the character that is the spot line this is the character that's the line this is the character that's just this character probably shouldn't be touched because either a it takes skill or b it's just not actually that absurd that person is just good sigma is that tank mm-hmm and if Sigma is seen as the Giga problem, besides Ramatra right now, it's actually Ramatra Sigma. It's actually Ramatra Sigma at the moment. People see Sigma as a problem. Yeah, actually, yes. I and only th- see Diva, Mog, and uh, Ramatra. I will put Those it like are this: the only problem tanks, like just flat out, like they're I, doing too much. As 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 I hyper grinded especially especially with certain people especially being with in pc pool more often and stuff like that and dealing with certain other stuff that's been happening in the game and like me becoming more knowledgeable about the game and me playing with certain people who are of these certain tiers who are like oh no we're running this comp we're running dive comp we're running rush comp you know what i mean it's become a situation where like that sort of stuff does pop out that's why it's become a situation that's why my takes on overwatch have been like melding in a different way in the stuff where like for example you take you take me back like a year ago and i'll be like moira is the most annoying thing in the game and now i'm just <laughs> like is. and i'm and now, and now i'm just like nah <laughs> personally or stuff like uh some like mercy res used to be able to get on my nerves even as mercy res and i'm and now i'm just like whatever and now it, for me it's become more like no your kiri your brigida your whichever tank is that tank for the season because like i said it switches around we just suffered through the horrendous period that was the maga maga meta jesus christ and (laughs) i will say this love that character maga is a well a cool a cool character but holy fuck them being meta was the worst thing i have ever played (laughs) <laughs> in like the long period of overwatch because if you didn't have an ana carry or just in general your hit healers sucked raps and i do feel like the dps don't have enough effect they don't have enough push that they should have in the game and i stand by that too i actually genuinely believe that the dps do need to be stronger but it's one of those things where they're scared too because they know if they push it too far then it becomes an entirely different problem especially with the amount of healing and damage in the game because my personal take on the game my personal take on what the happen should, should happen to overwatch one and this is something separate but i'm gonna get i'm gonna double back to this one skins gotta be good with how overwatch is in the community around overwatch if the skins suck that season sucks that just is what it is <laughs> i'm gonna be honest with you 
And that is crazy to say, but that's the truth. Um, damage and healing need to go down across the board. I think it's too overblown with that. I think the game is too overblown with damage and healing. And I also think they need to take a siege route where there is quick play, unranked, then ranked. Instead of quick, and it's going to divide queues, which everybody complains about Overwatch queues, I know. But like, the fact that Bl even Blizzard is like, oh no, we're making quick play sweaty on purpose is a problem. <laughs> the fact that there's lever penalties in quick play, I agreed with it at first. I was like, I hate people leaving my game. But at the same time, the more I thought about it, I was like, it's quick play. You should be able to just try something out. If you don't like it, get out. Um, which is why I do think unranked needs to be that middle period that they're trying to bounce around. If they're going to really do something like that, I think they need an unranked mode because it needs to just be quick play. just needs to be fun. You need to be able to play whatever you want to in quick play. And another in my third take, 6v6 needs to come back in the form of arcade. I think that I'm you, I, it's not going to work. It's not because gonna work the reason why are, though. the reason why, but that was saying, but the reason why is because you take put six v six in arcade back. See how many people actually play six v six versus five v five, and then go from there, and then make your balances around that. Because I still think that the game needs to be brought down in general. So even if it even if it isn't going to work, it should be work if it's, the game is brought down in terms of damage and healing. Because damage and healing is the straight up problem. I there shouldn't be a re. I'm gonna be honest, I think power creep is just too much. There shouldn't be a way to where the tanks are consistently, even tanks that are kind of bad, to be honest, are doing 20k. And then you look at the DPS, and then you Thank look you. at the and then you look at the DPS and they're doing nine. I'm not able to do my job because I'm getting spitballed by one character. And which should to not be, be fair, playing DPS. With, how I'm with how I'm with how my personal like feelings on is the matter. If they did handle it in that way, tank wouldn't be a problem. I don't want. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't want to adhere to whatever meta is happening with tank at the moment. Sometimes I just want to play Ramatra. Sometimes I just want to play Sig. Sometimes I just want to play Diva. I don't want to be like, oh, okay, they're going. I gotta um, play a comp team. They're they're Ooh, going. They're they're going Sig. I gotta go Zarya. It's time. Woo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, they're going MAGA. It's time to go SIG. Woo. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's too much. Counter like in counter picking was a thing that was always a thing with Overwatch, but the frequency is way too high, especially it's with stupid. tank. It's dumb high, bro. And that's why I'm like games balancing in that particular way is diff is like weird because then you have other shooters which I, I guess i gotta touch it now when you have other shooters like apex who when in not even the skin thing because again i'm gonna double back to the skin thing when you get to apex whenever the rank sucks the game sucks regardless of how balanced the game is and it is the craziest thing i've ever seen in the entirety of me playing gaming like i have never seen a game that hinges so much on ranked being good and all they have to do is just fix KP, fix kill points. Which is what <laughs> I've been hearing too, is that the kill points is crazy. Because you said you're in bronze, dropping 10 kills, dropping a double digit That's game in insane. BR. Which, in bronze, there's not even... Uh, you said there isn't like a... There's a penalty, across, there's a penalty of 35 across the board now. And I think he does that. It's across the huh? board? Is that like going up to like diamond? It goes up it goes up quite a bit. And that and the and your point gain, your point gain slash the penalty scales based off of what rank you're in itself. But like thirty it's usually like thirty to thirty five across the board. And the thing about it though is that like you don't start actually getting point. You get bonus points. You don't actually start getting points until after you get temp emplacement, which I get the point of the BR is to survive. But at the same time, if I'm dropping 10K and I get, if I'm dropping 10K and my squad gets 12, not 12, but you know what I mean? If I'm dropping 10K and my squad gets whatever, you know, like area, stuff like that. And then like under 10, and then I still go negative. We have issues. Even if I go neutral, I personally feel like we have issues. Because, like, they, they made the bonus points a little bit better, but at the same time, it's not, like, KP, getting kills does not feel like how you're playing the game. The game feels like you need to camp a third party. And even then, like, third party, third party is, like, 
kind of just around just because Apex is like that. If you, everybody was playing the game seriously, you would just be camping around. And it's gotten to the point where we've gotten to last. Me and my squad, Lion Guard squad that I play with, has gotten to the point to where we have been last circle in ranked in bronze and there are 10 squads alive. And that's ridiculous. Don't get me wrong, the mixtape modes are dope. The other the game balance is actually decent, minus a couple characters. Valkyrie, Lifeline, Crypto, which Crypto is just gonna be a problem to the end of time. He's the Persephone of he's a Persephone of Smite to Apex, so it's just like that. Um, which Crypto main <laughs> depresses me, whatever. But um <laughs> whenever rank player up... too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like my Yeah. I like my management mechanics, man. I like my okay, give me my information. I like my management. Do this. Okay, I'm gardening. What's up? Playing uh, I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, I know Deadlock and Killjoy. I know. But <laughs> with that being said, it's like, okay, so when everyone sucks in that game, the game player drop off just happens very badly. And it's like I well, time to it, wait it, till next season. <laughs> it's gotten to the point to where That's my regular horrible. Where my regulars are pl like going, can we like play something else or like getting like even <laughs> like tilted and like getting full tilted even and like we play a mixtape mode to chill off, but we feel like we're not even getting anything major for progression and stuff like that. Like because like progression apex is also kind of weird and stuff, and the store is kind of weird stuff. And so it's like, why are we here? What are we doing? Because we're not getting rank points. So like, what are we doing here? And it could, be, and it is a case of like, yeah, if you played enough, you could like grind up the ranks if I wanted to. And I play it like every day. I can still get up to like platinum diamond and stuff like that. Like I'm not a masters, I'm not a pred player or anything, but like I can get up like quite a bit in rank I have before. But like when you're getting like to that situation where you're like, hmm, you know what I'll play instead? Blood hunt. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> It's like I it's like one of those things like yeah I'm I'm kind of over it and that's what I'm saying I'm these games Overwatch and Apex while I do love these games are killing my competitive drive outright mm -hmm. like the way stuff is getting balanced in general when it comes to anything is killing my competitive drive for games more than it, anything has ever had with the exception of six and that's just because six is like handcrafted to be a bunch of stuff that I like. So like I lucked out with that, I but like everything else. Feeling that way with Tekken Eight, I'm right there with you. There's about to be some <laughs> problems in that game, and I'm about this to be like, because it was me. handcrafted for me. I kind of don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> so like, it's like, but everything else is like, because I worked hard to try to get to where I am when it comes to FPS games and stuff like that. Because y'all mm -hmm. remember when I didn't play them, so like. And only for the games to be like, yeah, we're not going to reward you for sticking with us this long. We're kind of just going to, like, give you a little bone here and there or, like, throw some random gotcha like the heirlooms. I blame Apex for something for some of the gotcha and shooters, kind of, to be honest with you. It does feel like heirlooms was, like, the big start of that. So, like, that's zero, zero point one. That's, uh. <laughs> but anyway, um, that ain't it's even a like, gotcha right, bro. Zero yeah, that's point. horrible. <laughs> and then they're like, well, we have a... And it's crazy because the reason why I'm calling it a gotcha outright is because it even has a pity system. If you it get does. Five, if you get 500 loot boxes, you'll probably get an heirloom. On that five, and on that's that, even that. worse than some gotcha pool systems. 500 is some insane. 500? <laughs> No gotcha. No, that's because most gotchas. Pity system, yeah, mo bro. you're right. Most gotchas like limit is a, like 20 pools. 70, 80, 70, 80 pools of like 10. And then they'll be like, oh, yeah, well, if you haven't gotten let's, it by let's now, give this, guarantee Let's give this SSR. boy a bone. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's give you at least one SSR between now and the time you hit 80. And then you'll be like, oh, it's my 80th pool. Guess and, I gotta get something. Yes, yeah, and you just shiny. have this. And then you just have to sit here looking at your locker going, but they have so much cool stuff because they're dropping an heirloom or even the prestige skins every other month. So you're like, oh, Seer just got a new thing that I can't have. That's crazy. Or there's Whoa. a thing with extra animations that I can't have. That's crazy. Oh, they got a prestige skin. That's dope. I'm not going to have it, though, unless I play only this game. For yeah, ninety hours and spend like three three bags every two months. 
and then they threw us a ball. They threw us a little ball. They threw us a ball. They were like, "Okay, we'll give you a progress. We'll give you some more progression. You got weapon progression now. Oh, you you get rank your le- weapon up to level twenty based off your kills and stuff like that. You do these little skill challenges. You get stuff for it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. We going in the right direction. And then I think about the shop again, and I'm like, but is it worth it though? Because like we don't even. I'll be real with you. Even with Apex, we don't even have the skin level that other games have in that sphere. Like nobody's talking about Apex. Nobody going that crazy over Apex. We had a whole Final Fantasy collab, and how many people did you hear talking about it? Zero. I didn't hear about it till it was mentioned by. It wasn't even you, it was VG. I'm like, oh, that is happening in Apex. I remember seeing the trailer, and then I don't remember hearing a thing about it. <laughs> we saw it at the Zero. Game Awards, and that was it. Any, Zero. Any other game that dropped, something like that drops in, and people would lose their absolute mind. But that's the thing, and, it was in Apex. And you hear, and you hear like, FF7 coming kind of to Fortnite? <laughs> I was and, just like, that's kind of a weird collab. Uh, I mean, I appreciate it, mending some worlds, the very Final Fantasy thing to do, but at the same time... And, and we make the, and then we, and then we make the Buster Sword, and then we give the Buster Sword a cost, because it's technically an heirloom, it's, it's a universal heirloom, don't get me wrong, but, oh how much yeah, how it much? Cost? 250, 300 if you round it up in certain countries. $250? Average air loan price. $250 for a buster. Nigga, I might as well go buy me a replica. At that point, I'm going to get me a buster sword I could put on my wall. Like... You want me to buy a buster sword <laughs> for a game that eventually is going to not be live service and they're going to take it off of the internet completely. For 250 mm-hmm. For 250 to get a Buster Sword when I could buy a replica for the exact same price. The only people, the only people that have it, I can promise you, are either people that were hoarding, hoarding shards, extra money, and or a streamer. You're capping. There's no other reason to buy it. I was about to say. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not even tripping. That's typical heirloom price. Yeah. That's them being nice. There was a couple of them that were like 400 previously. <laughs> I'm not doing it. You can't make me. You're and, then, and then it's gotten to the point where, like, again, like I said, this I said it several times. I, being the apex person for the absolute longest, never talk about the game unless I'm mad. <laughs> that's the yeah, problem. That's it's been like that for like the past, I think, year, almost year and a half at this point. I want that game to succeed so badly. But I can't reasonably ask people to suffer through that game. But it's like that. Especially with like me recently becoming like a Blood Hunt content creator to some extent. So I'm I guess I'm living in Prague now. <laughs> it's, like, it's just it'd what it like is. That. It'd be like that. And Prague don't get me wrong. It's a, a fun place to be if you know how to manage Prague. <laughs> I will say that. It's just and insane a... that a game that's now mainly community supported is in a better spot than Apex. Then a then a fucking a live AAA service a company known as EA. They just Dude. don't know what they're doing. It's amazing that they have survived this long. <laughs> and it's like they'll start with something so simple like Apex Legends. It'll come out and people will be like, "This is new. This is fresh. This is BR. It's." Catered to the BR community, it started the revolution of BR, and it's fun as I don't know what. All the characters have their own roles. All the characters the have their own feels abilities. Great. Gunplay is great. The shields are cool. Everything just works. Seasons keep coming. More stuff keeps coming. Things get changed. Uh. I understand nerfing Wraith. She was the streamer character. Everybody was using her. She was everywhere. <laughs> you did not see her for competitive. No matter what rank you're in, there's probably a number one Wraith sprang your team down and get the fuck out of there i get it she needed to be tuned fine it got fine. to the point it got to the legitimate point where the guns they be adding the maps they be changing it got to the point to where bangalore the they be making a- bangalore got nerfed huh? who the fuck nerfs bangalore <laughs> <laughs> All she does is throw smoke. What do you want from her? Her passive got nerfed. It was her passive because of the me- because of a meta change. Her, her sprinting passive. passive? Mm-hmm. So me getting shot at and me being like, "Fuck this!" That got nerfed. When you can hit me 
but Rafe still exists. Or she could be like, oh, I'm getting shot at. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the um, thing about it too is that it came down to like, it was, it was what the final blow of it because I actually did recently uninstall Apex. Ooh. Oh, the final, the final blow of it was me going through an event where, and I might install it again. I have Stockholm Syndrome. It is what it is. But um, <laughs> it was it was one of the things where like they brought the classic mask back with classic loot rotation for a bit, and me and the homies played it. Played it. And not only that, they brought the classic maps and they rotated from day to night. So we got Night OG Kings Canyon and Night OG World's Edge. It was beautiful. We got and it then, at night without it being Halloween. Night maps. Yep. And then we played it and it was like, this is great. I'm talking about, I have never seen me and the homies be so consistent on that game. And then it left and we were like, oh, the game's dead again. Let's play, let's play my hero. And by the way, my hero Stolter got your rate straight from Apex, in my personal opinion. But that's the, 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 oh let's not, my let's not, god! Let's not Please do don't. Let's I don't not, bro. The soul of Fusca. Let's not do that. <laughs> so, with that being said, it was like one of those things where, like, that was like, with a situation going to where I'm even uninstalling Apex. And don't get me wrong, I'm a Blood Hunt Vampire the Masquerade shill. I actually love the Masquerade. I'm think I was even thinking about starting a series about it several times over. But with that being said, it's like. That was a push that made me go to the technically dead game. And the fact that a AAA game is pushing me to go to the technically dead game is crazy. Because Blood Hunt, I'm going to present this for the podcast. It's going to be like one of my last major points when it comes to the game and stuff. Because like it's kind of like weird. But I'm I'm optimistic, but I'm also depressed. Um, Blood Hunt had a thing. Shark Mob was like, we can't support the game no more. It didn't go where we wanted to. We knew the game was going to be niche. We knew that that many people were going to be into it in the beginning anyway. But at the same time, it's hit a threshold to where we're like, we, we got to focus on other things. And I was like, okay, I'm thinking the game's going to die. They were like, no, we're keeping the servers up. We're keeping the last patch up, but we're going to have this community updates tab. And what we're going to do is that the community updates tab, you pick what comes in the rotation. You pick what's the goal. Guns. You pick these these little balance tweaks and stuff like that around Prague. Have fun. Do what you need to. By the way, the entirety of the battle pass is free, and it's going to be a rotating battle pass at that with rotating items that are seasonal that you can just pick up from playing the game. Have That's fun. That's how you do it. And I was like, you. It was that I, easy. <laughs> That's the I got, thing that makes me my mind explode. It was that easy. And I was like, I have gotten more entertainment out of, like, again, a dead game than I have the ones that are alive right now. The only thing that would have been the icing on the cake is if we ever got cross prog. If we ever got full cross prog, well, cross party, if we got cross party, it would have been a wrap. I still think to this day, if cross party came fast enough, Blood Hunt would be a big celebrated game. And I am going to, and that is the one, that is... I've decided that's my shield game because like it's astounding how much work that shark mob actually put into it especially after me coming off of being depressed about like literally one of my favorite games like it was getting to that point to where apex was in conversation of being a top five game for me and then being like you know what vampires have fun and if it's your aesthetic go for it <laughs> I'm like, it gets no better than that so like and then even it the characters, even the weakest character who's like, tw I think Toriador Muse, because that's the one with the flashbang. That's, yeah, the, even the weakest characters in the game right now feel playable. The rotate, the rotation feel playable. Like, sure, there's a couple bots in the matches and stuff like that, but at the same time, you kill the bots and then you, you're you going to fight. You're going to fight a real player before that match ends, if not mm -hmm. a decent amount of them. And they're going to have that movement. And the movement in that game is still crazy. And that's the thing, though. I would compare them both for a bit. Apex was promoted as a movement, a movement battle royale. It was, it, it was is. the move. Yeah, it's a movement, and the movement on it, the movement in Apex is the main thing that gets nerfed. Versus, oh, there's this person flying over here. This person just jumped across three streets. This person is <laughs> teleporting and hitting the rewind, and this person doesn't have movement. But good luck pushing them because they just got that stone skin and that charge. It will knock you out, Playboy. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> It's like, 
I've been very irritated on the state of gaming, but I'm optimistic because I, what I think is going to happen is, like I said, these indie devs or like these devs are like a little smaller are going to actually push things a bit to where, oh, why are we having our players leave in droves towards this thing that's like shouldn't even be in our league? And then that's what's going to cause the conversation because you're even seeing a lot of players leave like Warzone and stuff like that. You're even seeing a lot of players feeling like, I don't know how I feel about this MW3 and MW, and which is crazy because there's things in these games that like are so good. Like I said, the the, the weapon table in MW3 the, and even some of the gunplay and stuff like that feel great. And then you have like awkward stuff. And it's like, why is this here? Why is this one <laughs> aspect so horrible? It's pushing me away from the entire game. And that goes from fighting games, shooters and stuff like that. And the single player people been eating, which I'm about to become one of them again. <laughs> because... Do the single player people in Eden. The only exception to this rule is Fortnite, but I'm convinced Fortnite can't fail at this point. Fortnite found that formula, bro. Because even after that OG stuff, they somehow made an on par season with the new stuff that they brought out recently. You know what it is with Fortnite? Fortnite is it's, a, it's the epicenter of gaming. And I, I can't say it any more than that for the simple fact that there is nothing that you can't do in Fortnite. And now that we've got this last update with Rocket Racing, with Lego Fortnite. Yeah, Rock Band 5. Layering it on. Yeah, Rock, I forgot about Rock Band, but yeah, that, that layering I it on. I didn't realize how, even with stuff like Fortnite Legos, because I've been mostly racing and stuff like that too, but even stuff like Lego Fortnite. Lego Fortnite has such deep systems it has systems that they've been asking that people from and Minecraft, Minecraft have been asking for. I asking saw for, that for, for years, <laughs> and to the point to where literally, like, Lego Fortnite looks like a modded Minecraft game, and that's the craziest mm -hmm. thing to me. Or like the racing, like the racing feeling, like the gravity, the gravity and the weight of cars can feel yeah. a little weird sometimes. But the racing being so clean and stuff like it's just. And then progression across the board. Like, sure, there's current, there's microtransactions everywhere in Fortnite, but you know what you're getting into. And even then, you gonna get what you want. Oh, you see, yeah, that, like uh, random. That, I guarantee random... you, if, if if Final Fantasy came in Fortnite, I wouldn't be spending no two fifty. I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna spend an easy fifteen and call it a day. You spend fifteen to thirty five. Thirty five for like a full pack of all the yeah. characters. 15 for maybe like one actual bundle with one character, a pickaxe, a player card or a backpack. And that's then, another thing. They've got the money situation down. Yeah. <laughs> and that's if and that's if you don't do something like the crew pass cuz I have never seen something be so worth it cuz like you have the crew pass which has it's it's like, it has it, it has a straight up pack of stuff like that gives you the gives you the battle pass off top gives you skins and those skins change because the longer you stay in the crew pass you get legacy more, crew pass which yeah. which changes the skin itself and that goes across the board like you get different colors and different shaders and all this stuff for your skin and a thousand v bucks stuff. per month on top of that, top and of that. yeah and they're talking Monthly about and they're talking about adding more to it yeah it's insane it's, nah, yeah they they you their have... marketing team Hell, even Kuma don't play it that often, but once the racing mode, he bought a car. <laughs> Nigga, I bought a car immediately. I saw the family mobile straight fast and furious. I said, I, there's nothing I love more than an American muscle car, bro. And, then, and when I saw that thing. And then, there was, and then it's like, the BR is, it's one of my favorite genres too. And that's what and makes me, that's what bothers me. The BR genre is a genre that I know can't stay around forever because of the fact that most BRs are live service. Oh yeah, for sure. It's like that. But at the same time, it's like, as someone who's, that's one of their like high tier genres and stuff like that, it's like, it sucks because y'all been stealing each other, y'all been stealing from each other since the beginning. Like, the pinks, we all know the ping system is the most ping Apex, system, but... the reboot system, that was all Apex, that, that was nowhere <laughs> and, near Fortnite. And then it's when these other devs give you the blueprint for something and then you proceed to not do it and then slowly kill the game because of it. Like Fortnite got to a point where I even got mad that they did kill Paragon and even then they did stuff with Paragon and made it like, like made it okay later down the line, but that's uh -huh. a whole other thing. And then like 
now it's like I'm not really have that I don't really have that many options. It's either like Blood Hunt or Forts. And like that sucks because even every time we try to innovate in this genre because of how the genre is set up and stuff, it's like Spellbreak dies. Blood Hunt technically dies. Hyperscape wasn't particularly my thing. Didn't really like Hyperscape that much. Oh, but don't Ethan, that, I'm sorry, Kuma. I'm my sorry. favorite VR. I didn't get to I, I didn't get it. to to be fair, I only got to play peak hyperscape a couple times because when I'm talking about PC hyperscape, because you know PC hyperscape was way different than console hyperscape. Like I only got to play P, uh, like PC hyperscape a couple times, so like it's one of those things. But like when it got to console, it was like this isn't my thing, but this is dope. The premise is still dope. The guns still feel good and stuff. Um, and I'm still very depressed about Spellbreak. Spellbreak and also, could have been. Oh my yeah. god, I love Spellbreak so yeah, much. Spellbreak was dope. great too. The Rumbleverse people getting their hearts literally broken over how oh what happened God. to Rumbleverse. So like it's one of those things. It's one of those things where like I hate the one thing I hate about current the current state of gaming is just how you can't get word? comfortable. Temporary, yeah. How yeah. temporary everything is. And it's not even it's not even just that. It's that more than ever, especially now the competition is as high as it's ever been in gaming so if you, you haven't been in the that, game for a minute getting your foot in the goddamn door is a task in its own you are treading on fire because like especially for the br genre if you don't have something that is as accessible as fun and as just i could just do it whenever as something like fortnite and apex even though apex is kind of going through a gray area right now but if it's not pick still, up and play still has a lot of people there who are committed to the cause but if you don't have something that can compete with those two games alone then you got to have something that can definitely compete with warzone that is the hardest thing to do in this modern day like of gaming it's because there's so much competition everywhere you look. And then it's just like, how am I going to top what they've been building on for a decade? For five plus only, years. For and seven only, years. And it only takes and it only takes one particular thing to be lacking for you to technically kill your game. The and that's yeah. the thing. And that's the thing though, because everyone who played blood hunt said that it felt amazing and then you get to like it oh it doesn't have cro it doesn't have cross party well well your and game's done was like, yep like yeah and, we're out, and then it's just it's just wraps and, it, and, and it, i was I just think, like oh because i think the two things the two main complaints that i seen from outsiders when it came to the when it came to it which i was like i said i was still chill they're just wrong was cross party which was on its way just didn't get here fast enough because smaller team and yeah. the vampire aesthetic wasn't for them which fair enough can't really do nothing with that which even if you didn't like vampires you like shooting shit right you, like <laughs> you just you just, you just you just bite people in the process like <laughs> yeah right like you like the guns you like it's got the same thing all the brs nowadays have if a motherfucker is downed and i go finish him i probably get a shield back i probably get some hp back which everyone you know the game is mitigating so like my hero shield and health which is crazy because i think shield. i think my hero is actually kind of similar it even has the same respawn system yeah it with the, like, a, like hunt. yeah the collecting and then the, yeah. the the collecting and pickup but not even that the uh situation where like if you if you don't if you don't thirst your target they will get back up That'll oh yeah up. yeah true yeah 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 I, I didn't even think about that holy shit yeah, that's a very crucial and then because using your... you have to either A, eliminate that team immediately, or it really does become that like hard, I have to take them out no matter what. And then it sets up situations that you have to fight in. Now you got to you... worry about potential third parties even harder, even though you got somebody down because if you they come the and start party. a fight, yeah, if they come and start a fight, now you got to mitigate, you got to regroup you got a min max to make sure that you can still cash out on your kill points but you can also still take this fight and you hey. know have your team ready to go for another round this gonna be my like fuck. The third party it's gonna be like big it's gonna be like my big like my because again this is the b shelling blood hunt episode apparently this is gonna be oh, my big good. moment for this as well 
Okay, hear me out. It is the only game, the only VR that I can think of where there are quest. Well, no, no, no. Fortnite does it. Fortnite does it. I'm not yeah, even for the count. Yeah. But there, are, in the hub world, there are quests that are into the story and the quests are interwoven in the gameplay and the hub. So like the different. Oh NPCs, yeah, when you're in the hub, like, it's oh, like yeah. you're playing a single player all of yeah. a sudden. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like. Like, hey, so we got these, we got these anarchs in our territory. We need you to like pick up these blood bags on like that south roof. You know, you know the one by the church. Yeah, yeah. go get, go go pick that up real quick. And you pick it up, and then you're like, okay, mission complete. You get your progression. You get your guns. You get your skins. And I'm talking about like I'm playing. I played two matches yesterday and got four skins out the past. <laughs> I was like. And that wasn't even counting the credits. I got to buy more skins because the drip <laughs> in Blood Hunt was insane. Play Blood Hunt. It still <laughs> is. It's it like the is. the customization is immaculate in and Blood Hunt. If you don't if you don't want to do any of that, again, community balance and TDA community balance and TDM maps because you can even choose the TDM maps that are about to happen in the next rotation. Yeah. Go play. T play TDM because it's fun. You back in it. You just I going crazy with the gun. Like, TDM. Yeah, me and Kumo like, went crazy in TDM. <laughs> we were carrying. <laughs> it's like, it's literally one of those things where it's like, it has a little bit for everybody. It's like, it just got a little dark aesthetic to it. And you know, people like being edgy. I like being edgy. Come on. I don't play have a little edgy like. side. <laughs> it's like, play, and like my personal, my personal thing is like, if VR is your thing, if you want something happy and just vibey, play Fortnite. If you want something a little darker because you were edgy, you never really grew out of being a teenager. You play you a little blood. You play you a little blood hunt. Do what you need to do. It's, it's great. So like that's one of those things. Was like that's my big take on gaming. I think that we are getting a lot of strides in terms of these smaller development teams and these indie teams. But like AAA means nothing. And At this in all point, honesty, nah. if I had a choice, if I yeah, had a choice. It's just a slap. It's just like a sticker to be a AAA like company nowadays, which is really fucking. At the, bad. Yeah, at this point, it's literally like the like a title it's card like a saying in, to in put front on of them to make sure that people. Yeah, buy it's like it. you know how some movie trailers saying like written by award uh, Emmy award winning uh, blah blah blah. Exactly. And it's like okay, and <laughs> exactly, and it's just like oh well, this person also seems to be the person who wrote this and that is one of my favorite movies of all time well this studio also happens to be a studio that worked on this and that happens to be one of the biggest jrpgs yeah. or <laughs> freaking action adventure games of all time but i mean when you have these AAA companies making brs and they're treating the br more like a just like a leech more than an actual like let's keep in touch with our community let's make sure everything makes sense for how purchases should work and make sure that if they're actually putting time into the game that they're getting things worth their grind whether it's in ranked whether it's yep. in pubs yep. whether it's from the battle pass stuff sure. let's just make sure that everything in this game is centered around you having fun but you also feeling worth getting exactly what you put your time in for you want to know what's crazy feel like that's a hard thing to do you want to know what's crazy? And, like, that was, like, my main thing. Like, yeah, Triple A just feels like a sticker, straight up. It's a sticker! My my biggest thing is that the crazy part about it is that World of Darkness and Shark Mob still touch down with the player base and go, but now and then, in our in the server, because I'm in the, the main server for it, they go, hey, by the way, the server's doing all right. Y'all okay over there? No Ooh, stutters? No, right. like... <laughs> and, and they, they even still touch base with us. It's a dead game, technically. They don't have to do that. It doesn't take much. You only Dicker. even a, <laughs> <laughs> and and that goes for all genres. And like I said, I'm glad the single player people are eating right now because again, I'm about to join. I'm about to join you guys. You guys are on some other stuff. So now I was so, complaining about Grand Blue earlier and about how they were doing the RPG mode. I'll give this a pass for the simple fact that Relink is literally right around the corner, oh like my the God. second of February. That is a completely RPG game. Now, if that's what they had in mind when they made Versus... It's like, we I'll know this is slide. coming out like a month or two later. Like, I'll let that slide. They made an entire game based around the RPG, but it's a action adventure still based off the Grand Blue World. I'll let that slide. But what I won't let slide... We talk about battle passes? <laughs> we talk about battle passes. 
I have never been so disgusted. First off, full price game. Yeah. There is a free version, but free version has rotating characters. You can't get in lobbies, like private lobbies. Unless you buy the game. (laughs) Unless you have the full version of the game. You would have to go into a public lobby and find each other on the arcade machine. They literally hit you with the, it smells like broken here. (laughs) Whatever. Can't play story, can't do uh, any, can, like any of the story content. You can play oh, chapter you one. You can play chapter one of story, which if you played the vanilla, you'll already have that completed once you transfer all your stuff over. So if you're playing the free version, that will be a waste of your time. They don't have the Tower of Babel either. That was another single player fun thing you could do which you could also play online if you wanted but it was like a hundred floors just challenge mode just have fun fighting some of the monsters you fought through story and then get some actual unlockable things too they don't have that anymore either um but let me talk about this battle pass listen um free version free version goes up to 30 levels Full version, 60 level. Problem. (sighs) (sighs) Full price game. Battle pass would be about 10 bucks. You can't level up the battle pass. By playing the game. Makes you think, right? How do I level up the battle pass if I can't do it by actually battling for the (laughs) battle pass? I wonder. They have three different options. Dailies, weeklies, and what they called a standard. You don't don't need the battle pass to do any of this, but you can't upgrade, level up, get to the end of the battle pass, unless you are doing battle pass oriented challenges. You could play the game for 100 hours when this, yesterday, because they dropped the patch, Lucius dropped, when he dropped the battle pass dropped. But you can't level your battle pass by just going online, playing rank, going online, playing player matches, going online in lobbies. You can only do it on your dailies, your weeklies, and your standard. Here's the worst part. There are 60 levels and you have 40 days to complete it. That sounds like a notice. Do you get? Do you at least not... get a level per when you complete all of that? Like, like the because if it's still weekly, eight... yes. Okay. Oh, like, dailies, still... no. Oh, dailies only oh. cover about two hundred XP. They only give you three dailies. They cover about two hundred XP apiece. It is eight hundred XP to complete one level. So basically, you're not. So basically, you're not completing the battle pass unless, unless you no, buy it, you like buy levels. Unless you want uh, one, you can't buy no, levels. You can't complete the battle pass unless you particularly focus on cha- you. You can't play what you want to play. No, nope. you just okay. You nope. have to grind the T issue. You have to you have to focus on it, and then you have to grind a particular thing. Okay, I can. See, yeah, I totally can see why that's a problem because I didn't even the worst look battle into pass that practice I have ever seen in my life, and I have that, played everything bro at some point there's been something i've touched and i've never seen a battle pass tell you you cannot rank up a battle pass by just playing the you game you can't play the game do do this shit though <laughs> you have to do exactly what's in the battle pass that it says you have to do so the reason i even played the fall guys mode was to try to rank up the battle pass it was a weekly i gotta play 10 rounds or 10, what they call it is stages. I gotta play 10 stages 
of that game mode to get 2,000 XP. 2,000 XP will give me about two, two and a half levels. You said each XP. one's 800. Yeah, that's like two Eight, and a half levels. 800 XP a level, at least right now where I am. I'm under 20, and it's been 800 consistently through yeah. so far. That's insane. That's really insane. But and you can't upgrade the battle pass and from just playing this on. Is the thing. <laughs> this is why vanilla is still, in my opinion, the better version of the game. Fact. Because they added things in the game, like actual game mechanics, that didn't make the game feel swayed anyway. You know, it, like obviously there were still good characters, there were still better characters, there's still this character is a little bit more unbalanced or whatever the case may be. Yeah. with how they play and the tool that they have in their kit completely fine every fighting game every shooter every everything is going to have a bit of unbalance it's just how it is when you have so many different types of styles and kits and things that mesh together and then you have to think about the environment that you're playing them in how people think how people comprehend how much they don't care because that helps <laughs> And they added a be... lot of mechanics in this game, and a lot of it is oriented to modern gamers, which is mashing and being able to beat players that are higher than their caliber, because that is what the modern motto has been. Street Fighter VI brought in modern controls, which is not... You know, I think it's I think it's actually good. I think no, it's actually no, good I think modern controls is a good thing to have, because Street Fighter VI did it correctly. You have access to move, your good moves, it's easier to DP, it's easier to throw fireballs, it's more accessible for newer players to, you know, get a feel for the game, but overall, you're probably still going to lose to somebody on Classic because they're going to have more execution, all those damage, more patience, and more just, you know, raw time with the understanding of the complete package of the game. Also, you Grand lose out on a lot of just, damage. You just mash. You just mash. You just mash your Grim. Oh yeah, that too. I forgot. They also do a damage reduction on modern controls so that you're not doing as much damage as you would on classic, which in a way that'll make you seem like, oh, well, I'm nerfed, but like at the same time, nobody can jump at you. You just press like <laughs> forward and your special button and you insta DP every single time. Every single time. It's, it's, it's never a problem you can't get jumped in on ever dirt, but you have modern. a flawless execution of walking forward back and then never missing yeah because you like, can still do it there are modern players or anything it, it, there are modern players in masters there you can yeah, still yeah, do yeah, it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and There's, that's the yeah. yeah and that's the thing too because like like i said it's it, it and i guess that's like the main focus of like what we've been talking about besides like the earlier music stuff is that modern gaming is in a weird state and with that being said, and with everything being said, like I said, I'm optimistic about the future, especially because I'm going to be looking even harder at indie stuff or like Blood Hunt as much <laughs> as much as I can and stuff like that moving forward. But in the same sense of like, I kind of want these AAA acts to get it together with the exception of FromSoft because FromSoft's doing all right. But um, I would like to see where things go from here, especially since this is supposed to be a very big year for gaming and we're going to be covering a lot of it as we progress through. And with that being said, I would like for the socials to be plugged if possible. I will probably have a lot of the, we'll probably have everyone's stuff down below in the description. Oh, yeah. And I've been living, like I said, I've been mostly living in terms of this podcast and I've been actually focused on my Cosma channel while I'm working on getting Melody and Ghost together to actually do something. You want me to link that too? On I can link channel. that with your socials. I would appreciate it. And with that being said, I think that concludes episode two of GXP. Thank you, Kuma, for joining in with us on this topic. And also, as far as everything goes, we're going to like be testing out different testing out different aspects formats and things that like you know make the podcast better. you might so even get just does, dual episodes with me and goes like i'll be back so, don't worry anything that anything that happens with um yes people will try to keep everything updated whether it's with me or with chris 
and I'm glad to be here. So with that being said, see ya. Later, everyone. Thanks for watching or listening.